Good morning, church family. Thank you for joining us this morning, whether you are joining online or in person. Welcome home. A few announcements before we begin our service. Thursday, February 24th, will be our, Valentine, will be our volunteer appreciation breakfast. Please connect with Nikki to RSVP. Please mark your calendars for these upcoming events this week. Wednesday. We will have our Sisters Inc. Bible study at 5 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Thursday, Troops Creative Worship Arts is meeting at 4 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Saturday is the Corps Cadets Rally. Let us pray for our Corps Cadets as they grow in leadership and faith. And next week, Sunday, is Potluck Sunday. We are all welcome to bring a side dish and join the Fellowship Hall after worship service. Thank you all again for joining us, and welcome home. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? Yeah. Well, let's get ready and stand, if you're able to, and join us in worship. Amen? Amen. Down, I'm 
God we serve is such a good, good Father. Amen? Let's shout his praise. Welcome home again, everyone. It's great to be in the house of the Lord where we get to congregate as a family and worship him and give him praise, all the praise that he is due. Amen. Amen. And uh, right now, as we enter a time of uh, worship and giving, um, and right after uh, we have offering and worship and giving, I will be taking the kids out to their, their class. So like most of the time, I like to share the verse that I read in my daily Bible app. And it always goes with what's going on. I, it's, it's like God controls the app or something. I don't even know. But today, it's fitting because tomorrow is um, Valentine's Day. 
And the, the verse of the day is John 3, 16. And um, it's, read in, it's read as, for God, so, for God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And as we enter into this, this time of Valentine's and this time of worship and giving, let's just remember that it shouldn't just be one day out of the year. We should be sharing that kind of love every single day, every minute of the day, in how we act, in how we talk, in how we treat people, and how we give. Everything we do should be just oozing and emulating the love of God. Everything we do. Why? Because he loved us so much first that even though he did not have to, he sent his son to die on a cross for us, to take our punishment, to fix the wrong, to rebuild that gap, to to restore us so that we can have a right relationship with the Father. And he's not even forcing it on any of us, which is even more of a showcase of his love. He wants us to choose it. And so as we give today, let us remember that in all that we do, we want to show this community, our friends, our family, our neighbors, everyone, the love of God in what we do. And just so you know that everything that is given that's what the Salvation Army is, is, is mission is, is to bring this hope, to bring this love, to bring this forgiveness out to the community by giving them food, by helping them with other means, um, rent or whatever it may be. This is what your, your generous um, offerings and gifts go towards. It goes to show love in action because love isn't really love unless you're putting forth something to show it, like Christ put forth his sacrifice. He came here, stepped forward, and took our punishment to show his love. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I just pray once again that you bless everyone here, bless what is given, uh, and, I, and may you multiply it ten times, Lord, so that we can go forth and be that light, to be the, the hope that you want the community to see, to be that example where when people see us, they see your love, they see forgiveness, they see hope, and they're like, you know what, I want some of that. I need to go to see what that's about. And then we get to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our goal. That is our mission above all things because this world is temporary. So as we give today, let us keep that in mind. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're here and you would like to give, please use the outer aisles and bring your gift up to the altar. And if you're watching online, you can give at tithely.com or use the app tithe.ly. You just search up Salvation Army of Auburn CA and you can give that way. Thank you and God bless. Um, please join me and Stan as I read the scripture today found in Amos 9, 8 through 12. Look in the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. However, I will not totally destroy the house of Jacob. This is the Lord's declaration, for I'm about to give the command, and I shall take the house of Israel among the nations. As one shakes a slide, slide one of the two, but not pebble will fall on the ground. All the sinners amongst my people will say, disaster will never overtake or confront us, will die by the sword. In the day that I will restore the fallen booth of David, I will repair its gaps, restore its ruins, and rebuild it in the days of old, so they may be processed in the remnant of Edom. And all the nations that are created by my name, this is the Lord's declaration. God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cooper. That was a great job. For those of you who don't know, we have some new Corps cadets that have started uh, being more involved with all the ministries here, and we're just so blessed by how they serve God here and uh, help us just further the kingdom, amen? Well, today I have the privilege and honor to share the message. And um, don't worry, it's still in Amos. So it's in the last chapter of Amos. It's funny because every time Jesse gets into like a sermon series or a chapter or, or one of the books of the Bible, and then I come and, and preach, I usually tend to do my own thing, and sometimes it's related with the series, sometimes it's not, but I ensured that this time 
um, to stick to what we had planned and we get to complete and finish the book of Amos. So I'm excited about that. It's actually a really good book. It's really fitting of what is happening in the world today. It's really fitting because Valentine's Day is tomorrow as well. And so um, I just want to share that um, one of the things that people don't think about when they read the book of Amos, they think about, oh my gosh, the wrath of God and the discipline and, and just the judgment and the disobedience and just all about the rebellious people. But every book in the Bible has a theme. And I just want to share the theme for Amos is God's love. And um, when you think about the word love, and I think I shared a little bit of this in my uh, um, home league devotional this week, is that when you think about love, there's many different ways that love is expressed and that it's received. Um, it's expressed through words of affirmation, um, through acts of kindness, um, quality time, physical touch, um, receiving gifts, and even through communication. It's even showed through discipline judgment, and correction. Sometimes we love chocolate. I shared that in our uh, home league. Sometimes it's flowers. Sometimes we love going to the movies or even just reading. Um, it's expressed and received in many ways, but today's first point that I want to focus on is how God's love is just. His love is just. So in verse 8, it says, Look, the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. However, I will not totally destroy the house of Jacob. This is the Lord's declaration. So what are we reading here in this verse? We see that in Amos, he's sharing, he's sharing what God has revealed to him in this moment. And he and what we see is this short verse is that God's justice will be carried out. And it's not because he wants to hurt me or that he wants to hurt anyone. But he really loves his creation so much that there will come to a point where those sinful people, the sinful kingdom will have to answer, right? So especially if they have um, an unrepented heart. Um, because what kind of love is it if God ignored the cries of the innocent that were being oppressed by the sinful? His love is shown by postponing judgment, but then carrying it out when needed. And his love is truly just. And I kind of like to think about this part as like parents when we're disciplining our children. Sometimes it's really hard to discipline our children um, just because we love them so much, or at least for me. And I try to give them like all these chances by postponing the discipline, or I just give these like little reminders like, hey, remember we talked about this last week? Or do you remember we, um, we said like God, God wants us to have self-control? Um, you know, just little things like that. Um, but... At the end of the day, if my child is continually not sharing in school or just being too rough when she's playing or he's playing with another child or saying unkind or hurtful words, then, I, then now my child is what? She's affecting everybody else around her. And because I love her and or him so much, then I, as a parent, I need to discipline and I need to enact judgment on that kind of behavior. And God, he does the same exact thing to his people, both when they're doing wrong, and he does it to the unbelievers when they are doing wrong to his people as well to protect his people. He will judge the unbeliever as well, believe it or not, as well. And we see here in the minor prophets that he does just that. And if you open up your scriptures to Proverbs 3.12, it says, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father, the son he delights in. Even in Hebrews 12, 8 through 9, it also reads, But if you are without discipline, with all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had nature fathers discipline us, 
and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the Father of spirits and live? So basically, we all need to accept God's justice, even if it's going to be difficult, because sometimes it's really hard, you know, and God sees the need to enact judgment and discipline, and it's, it's the right time and at the right moment. He knows, and he has the, that perfect timing, and he even sees the, the bigger picture, and sometimes we don't see that. So if this is reconciling with someone that maybe you've wronged or you've said something or you've mistreated, um, this means you should go and talk to that individual and make things right with them. And this is justice. Um, you know, if your family or friend is mistreating someone or bullying them or manipulating them, then enacting the love of God and speaking up to tell them when you're with them. You should just share and go with them and tell them, like, hey, you know what? Like, I've noticed this about every time we're around this group or this individual. You don't like them, and I've kind of noticed that you mistreat them. And I love you so much, and I just think that, you know, it's just not right. You should just tell them that. And if you're not strong enough to do it on your own, then you should bring a friend with you to help hold you accountable to do that as well. God's love is kind and patient and forgiving. Um, you know, sometimes this friend of yours may get upset when you tell them, hey, you know, it's not right. We shouldn't do it. They're probably going to be like, don't judge me. They're going to build all these walls up all of a sudden, not text you back, not call you, not share personal things anymore because they feel like you've judged them. Um, when really you're just trying to help them along the way to show them, hey, this is the way that the Lord has told us that we should act. We should be kind. We should be just. And, and this is what the Bible says. It's like, don't get mad at me because I'm telling you what the Bible says, you know. Um, and unfortunately, it happens everywhere. Even in ministry, injustice happens. I mean, even at schools, even with the government, everything that's happening in the world today, there's just so much injustice happening. And the best thing we can do is if we're a part of it is we should make it right. Or if we're not a part of it, but we see it and we just can't do much, the best thing we should do is pray as well. And the, the, this world really needs this kind of love. And another attribute that I see here um, in God, in Amos, is that his love is faithful. And if we read in verses 9 through 10, it says, For I am about to give the command, and I will shake the house of Israel among all nations, as one shakes a sieve, a sieve but not a pebble fall into the ground. All the sinners among my people who say, disaster will never overtake or confront us, will die by the sword. So here we see that God talks about shaking the house of Israel among all the nations as one shakes a sieve. I can't say the word, but it, I, I'm sure you guys know what it is. A sieve is like a strainer um, that collects like seeds and, and pulp. Um, and this is actually very significant to this part of scripture um, for us to grasp because the next part says that there will be no pebble that will fall to the ground, but all the sinners among gods will die. So this is God's faithfulness, right? To those that have humbly submitted to them and have him in his heart and call him the Lord. So what he's doing here with the sieve, with this analogy, is he's separating the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the weeds. It's really interesting. And this means that he's not going to allow anyone who had repented and had submitted their hearts to him to be condemned. And his love is so just that those that are sinful, sinful and unrighteous and are trying to hide among the righteous will be brought to light. Because his love is faithful. Sometimes as believers, when we're facing a season of pruning, um, a season of challenge, of obstacles, just so much unknown that's happening around us, 
we tend to easily fall into this dangerous, dark place where we feel like we're alone and, oh, we're forgotten about, about nobody, no remembers me, I'm alone, nobody cares, when really we forget that God, it's God's strength that we were actually able to get through that difficult situation. It was him all along that carried us through that very challenging season. And maybe it was to mold us, right? Because sometimes when God is allowing us to go through certain things, it's to, there's a purpose for it. It's to mold us and it's, it's uncomfortable. And we forget about his love being, how his love is faithful and, and that he's really the one paving the way. And even if everybody around you is doing wrong, and it seems like they are flourishing, keep doing what God wants you to do. It's kind of like that TikTok video where the wind is blowing really heavily, and there's a group of girls trying to cross the street against the wind, right? But everybody else is going with the wind because it's easier, and they're like, woohoo! I am flourishing, I'm going with the wind, when they're like, oh my gosh, this is so difficult, like, are we going to be able to actually get through and cross to the street? Yes, yes, they will, because if that's the way that God is directing you to go, then that's the way you're going to go. Just like we read about the CV, the strainer, right, God won't allow you to fall to the ground when he cleanses this world as well. And even in Psalm 33, 4, it says, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is trustworthy. Even in 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, it also says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and guard you from the evil one. When you're called out of this comfortable situation, Maybe a good paying job to go somewhere else because you have been called by God. And it doesn't make sense in this worldly perspective, right? We should faithfully do it. Because our God, he is so faithful. And everything he does is in faithfulness through his faithful love. So when we're faced with those uncertain, challenging situations, right? Or maybe we're faced with a situation where to treat somebody poorly because our friends around us are doing it. And you think, what's the point of doing the right thing when everyone else is doing it anyways? Be faithful in your love and just as God will be faithful to you in his love and show mercy and kindness instead of malice and contempt. And when you exemplify God's love, you're actually being a part of this restoration process, which is interesting if you think about it this way, because his love restores. So that's the third point, his love restores. And even here in Amos 9 verses 11 and 12, it says, in that day, I will restore the fallen booth of David. I will repair its gaps, restore its ruins rebuild it as in the days of old so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that are called by my name. This is the Lord's declaration. The love of God is restorative. When we accept God's loving justice and we know his love is faithful and you have humbly submitted to his will, in your life and accepted the correction, you will be restored. For example, your friends are being rude to someone and it's easier to go along, but you don't know what that other individual is going through. Like what if her parents are going through a divorce, right? You never know what that individual's going through. So if you step in in that moment and you say, hey, you know what? I don't really think it's cool that we're treating her that way. Even though she's been mean to you, even though she's probably wronged you, it's 
not the right thing to do. And I'm just going to step in right now, and I just want to end it. In that process, you're shining God's light through you, and you are even giving an opportunity for a restoration process to happen between those relationships. And God's promise was not voided because of any discipline. It wasn't taken away because of any doubt. When we accept our discipline and we stay faithful, we become new. We become new. We become better than we were. We receive the blessings of Eden the way things really should have been, right, from the very beginning. This is exactly what Amos, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, really wants each and every single one of us here to understand. We won't be the same when we embrace the love of God. We won't. We're set apart. We won't be remembered for our sin. That's not what defines us, what we did in our past, our sin. We'll be known because of God's salvation, because he transformed our lives. We made that choice to allow him into our heart as our Lord and Savior, for him to come in and transform. So that means we're new now. And this is very interesting because as I was writing this, I was like, huh, this reminds me of myself. If you knew me as a youth and you know me now, you would know how much of a different person I was. As a youth, I was such a rebel. Um, I used to climb up on the church's roof. No joke. I have other officers that can attest to that. I'm not kidding. I used to crawl underneath the pews during the sermon when my dad was preaching, and I would steal people's shoes. Like, what? Yes, I'm not proud of it. Um, you know, I was completely conformed to the world. With the music, with my clothing, everything. I just strived to be in the cool circle of friends. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to be different. I knew that that's what God wanted me to be. I knew the word. But I wasn't set apart at all. I didn't strive to be more like Christ. But the older I got, the more I realized and the more I felt lost, that I was lost in this world full of sin. And I was just like, what am I doing with my life? And the more I strived God, the more I wanted to get rid of all the dirty parts of my life. And my perspective changed. My circle of friends changed. The more I allowed God to come into my life, the more he cleansed me. The more I saw how his love was just, even through the uncomfortableness. And the more I was able to see how much his love is faithful and the more he restored me. He put all of my broken pieces back together and he just reminded me of his love. And if you look at me now, you will see that I'm restored in him. No, that does not mean I'm perfect. I am not perfect. I am so far from perfect. Oh my gosh. But my soul has been made right and my life has changed because of his restorative power. Because of the restorative power of his love. And even in 1 Peter 5.10 says, now the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus will personally restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 it even says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new things have come. When the love of God is in you, you'll be different. You're going to be different. You're going to be set apart. You won't be the same. We were born with a sinful nature, and because of the love of God, we have been restored to how we should have been. We have been made new. But that requires a decision, a choice, right? This means that you don't have to allow your past to hold you back. God has wiped it all away with his love. This also means that if there's something in your life right now that you have done and that you want to keep hidden or you're ashamed of, you can put it at the foot of the cross. 
where love poured out. There is nothing that you have done that the love of God cannot restore, cannot forgive. It's like that other TikTok video where she answers the call and she's like, thank you for calling God's line. And she says, "Uh uh-huh, that sin is forgiven. Uh Uh-huh, that sin is forgiven. And then she stops and goes, ooh, never heard of that one before. But yeah, those sins are forgiven as well. It doesn't matter if you've lied, if you've cursed, if you've stolen, if you've lived a sinful lifestyle. If you allow, if you choose to allow the love of God to work in your in your heart, and you have him as your Lord and Savior, and you allow his love to change you and grow you, you will be restored and made new. So as we end here in the book of Amos today, I don't only want you to see the wrath of God. I want you to see what's truly being shown to us here. It's his mercy, his kindness, his forgiveness, his faithfulness, his justice, and his love. Because if God did not love us, then he would just let us burn. He would just let us burn. But he loves us too much to allow that. And he is going to do all that he can to enact justice so that you will do justice to show his faithfulness so that you will be faithful and to restore you so that you can show others the way to a loving and restorative God. Amen? So if you're in a season right now where you have a known, where you have challenge, well, I'm just going to ask everyone to bow their heads and just close their eyes. And if you're in a season right now where you have a lot of unknowns, you have challenges, you feel like you're alone, you feel like you're forgotten about, I just want to remind you that you're not. That God calls you his own, that you are loved, and that he wants to be a part of every part of your life, that he is right there. It's through his strength that you're able to get through what you need to get through. There's a plan and there's a purpose for it. And I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to come up and just pray. Don't be afraid. And maybe you don't know God. And you want to have that to be a part of your life. And you want to accept him to be your Lord and Savior. Then I encourage you as well to come up and and do the, the prayer with me as well. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing, nothing too dark for God. He will forgive your sins. He is just waiting for you to make that decision. So what is it going to be? There's no better day, no better time than today to accept him into your heart, to put all of your issues, all of your insecurities at the foot of the cross. Remember, that's where his love poured out. And he wants you to come to him, to have that encounter with him. And if you're watching, I just encourage you to write in the comments, give us a call. We'd love to pray with you as well. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for your love, for your justice, for your discipline, for your faithfulness, for your hope for your strength you are all we need I ask that you may open up our eyes to see that we need to continue to follow you and what you've called us to do help us have your perspective help us see people in the world like you see them help us love them and be kind Help us to be set apart 
so that your line, your light can shine so brightly through each and every single one of us here. Thank you for your compassion, for your gentleness, and just your beautiful example. Because there's nothing that you've called us to do that you already haven't done yourself. And I just thank you for, for giving us this, this book of life that we're able to read and have life's instructions on there. And that we may be able to take heart and really follow your word and what you've asked for us to do. And we just thank you for who you are and for this time that we've been able to come together and learn more about your word. In your name I pray, amen.